Hi, welcome to another Biomedical Engineers TV video. In this video, we will look at heart electrophysiology. Before starting this video, we would like to request our viewer to support us on Patreon and PayPal. Your donations help us to create more accurate content on this channel. Now, let's start the video. Let's look into the beginning of heart electrophysiology. Evidence for the cardiac muscle being a functional syncytium were published in 1952 by Silvio Weidman, the father of cardiac cellular electrophysiology. In the same year, Hodgkin and Andrew Huxley demonstrated in a squid axon how channels open and close and how ions travel through these channels. This work was rewarded with the Nobel Prize in 1963. The discovery of the gap junction in cardiac cells was made by M. Karnakovsky in 1967, while Etienne Jules Marie was the first to document ventricular premature beats. He also described the refractory period of the heart and produced the first graphically recorded ECG in an animal in 1876. Fun fact, he also invented cinematography. How does heart electrophysiology work? An electrophysiology test is a test performed to assess your heart's electrical system or activity and is used to diagnose abnormal heartbeats or arrhythmia. The test is performed by inserting catheters and then wire electrodes, which measure electrical activity through blood vessels that enter the heart. Let's look into the procedure of heart electrophysiology. The EP study is performed in the electrophysiology laboratory of the hospital, where you'll be placed on an x-ray table. A camera and television screens, heart monitors, and various instruments will be close by. Electrodes will be placed on your chest and back to connect you to monitoring equipment. A blood pressure cuff will be placed on your upper arm to monitor your blood pressure. To prevent infection, a nurse will shave and cleanse the groin and possibly neck area where the catheters will be inserted. The area will be cleansed with an antiseptic. Sterile sheets will be draped over your body. Find a comfortable position so you can remain still during the procedure. Please don't touch the sterile areas on your neck and groin. Depending on the type of study you undergo, you may be given medication intravenously administered in your arm to sedate you or make you sleepy. These medications can help reduce your anxiety and relieve your discomfort. Your doctor will let you know if sedation medications are appropriate. A local anesthetic will be administered with a tiny needle to numb the area where the catheters are inserted. You will feel a pinprick and possibly a stinging sensation for a few seconds. One or more catheters, which are long, thin, flexible wires, will be inserted into a large vein in your groin or neck. The catheters will be guided to your heart. The positioning of catheters inside your heart will be monitored on a screen. You may feel pressure when the catheters are inserted. The incision site is less than a quarter of an inch. There are two parts of the EP study. Recording the heart's electrical signals to assess the electrical function and pacing the heart to bring on certain abnormal rhythms for observation under controlled conditions. Components of Heart Electrophysiology Machines Majorly, there are Invasive Blood Pressure Analysis Amplifier, Physiologic Recorder Amplifier with Simulator and Cardiac Output, Ablator Device, System Computer and Monitors. Some of the suppliers also provide Auto Transformer or UPS Supply along with the devices. The Blood Pressure Analysis Amplifier this type of amplifier is used to measure multiple site invasive blood pressures for the analysis for the variation and to no time difference. And the process of recording signals from the various electrode catheters is accomplished by means of a data acquisition system or physiologic recorder. This system is comprised of a junction box where the electrode pins from the catheters are connected. The signals then pass to an amplifier that filters and amplifies the signals and then to a multi-channel physiologic recording system. These computerized systems are capable of selecting which pairs of electrode poles in the junction box are paired to record a bipolar signal and of displaying these signals in real time on an LCD screen, as well as storing them for subsequent review. Most systems will have a real time and a review screen that allows for the physician conducting the study to analyze the information as it is being obtained. Stimulators in Electrophysiology Systems the stimulator delivers a constant current output through one or more output channels in order to pace the heart and deliver at least four coupled extra stimuli. The stimulator can be connected directly to the junction box where pacing poles are used to connect electrode pairs for pacing. Or, as is more commonly done today, the stimulator output is connected to the recording system where the computer controls which electrode pairs are used for pacing. This allows for different stimulation protocols to be set up using a multitude of specific electrode sites for stimulation. 
electrophysiology catheters and heart electrophysiology system. Electrophysiology catheters are typically made of woven dacron, a woven copolymer, polyurethane, or plastic. The electrodes are usually silver or platinum-based. Electrode pairs are usually closely spaced approximately 2 mm apart and with varying amounts of space between the pairs. Typical diagnostic catheters will have four electrodes, a proximal pair and a distal pair spaced approximately 5 mm apart, and a fixed curve at the distal end. The catheter is rotated at its proximal end by the physician as it is inserted from a vascular access site and is advanced under fluoroscopic imaging and precisely positioned within the heart so as to record the desired signal. Quadrupolar fixed curve diagnostic catheters are usually positioned at the high right atrium just across the tricuspid valve in order to record a his bundle potential and at either the right ventricle apex or RV outflow tract. Specially designed multipolar catheters are sometimes added in order to record signals from multiple sites from within a structure such as the coronary sinus or a pulmonary vein or adjacent to an anatomic structure such as the tricuspid annulus or the crista terminal. Steerable catheters incorporate a pulley mechanism that allows the operator to vary the curve at the end of the catheter. What is an electrophysiology study and catheter ablation? An electrophysiology study is a test to see if there is a problem with your heart rhythm and to find out how to fix it. It is also called an EP study. A catheter ablation procedure is sometimes done at the same time. This procedure destroys or ablates small areas of your heart that are causing your heart rhythm problem. The doctor puts plastic tubes called catheters into blood vessels in your groin, arm, or neck. He or she then uses an x-ray machine to guide long, flexible wires called catheters through the tubes into your heart. Your doctor uses the catheters to record your heart's electrical signals. If the doctor thinks your problem can be fixed with ablation, he or she can destroy a small part of your heart tissue. This is usually done with radio waves. You will probably be awake during the procedure, but you might be asleep. The doctor will give you medicine to help you feel relaxed and to numb the areas where the catheters go in. An EP study and ablation can take two to six hours. In rare cases, it can take longer. If you have an EP study only and you don't need more treatment, you may go home the same day. But if you have ablation, you may stay overnight in the hospital. How long you stay in the hospital depends on the type of ablation you have. This was a simplified video on heart electrophysiology. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.